Uh, hi everyone, uh, welcome to the Tambrella's webinar. Uh, feel free to, to say hi in the chat and tell us where you're joining us from. I'm going to do a brief introduction and then I'll introduce our speaker for today and then we'll have a question and answer session. Um, a reminder that this webinar is being recorded, so we will share the video in the next um, 24 to 48 hours. A little bit about Data Umbrella. We are a community for underrepresented persons in data science and we are a nonprofit organization. Um, about our team, uh, you've just seen Reshma. She's a statistician and data scientist. You can find her on Twitter, LinkedIn, and GitHub as Reshma S. I'm Beryl Canali. I'm also a data scientist and statistician. You can find me on Twitter at Beryl Canali. We have a code of conduct and we are dedicated to providing a harassment free and a welcoming uh, community for all. And we thank you for helping us uh, achieve that. Uh, how to support us? Uh, you can support us by one, following our code of conduct and help us uh, become a welcoming uh, community so that other people can join. And also we, you can help us by asking and answering general questions and sharing events and jobs uh, on our different uh, platforms, which I'll share. Another way to support us is to donate to our nonprofit. Uh, you can donate uh, through Open Collective. We are an Open Collective as the umbrella, or you can contribute through Benevity, which is a company matched uh, enable platform. Uh, you can also subscribe to our the umbrella YouTube channel where we have uh, videos to all the webinars we host. We usually have uh, at least uh, two webinars per month. On our YouTube channel, uh, you'll find different playlists. We have playlists on career advice, data visualization, scikit-learn, PyMC, and contributing to open source. You can also sign up for our monthly newsletter. Our monthly newsletter is on Substack, and we share it uh, at the beginning of each month. We also have our website, datarambrella.org, where you can find our resources on a list of conferences, open source, accessibility and responsibility, AI ethics, and more. We are across all social media platforms, so feel free to follow us. You can also look at our GitHub page. We have lots of resources on how you can contribute. Uh, you can look at our job board, where you'll find uh, job jobs that we help share and advertise. And also you can sign up to our newsletter and look uh, at our blog. Uh, this event has live captioning. So at the top of your screen on your right, uh, if you feel like you need to use uh, the live captioning, feel free to do so. Uh, we have a call for volunteers. If you feel like you have time to contribute to the timestamps of this video, you don't have to contribute to the whole video. You can just do a portion of the video if this is a topic that interests you. Once the video is up, you can go to our GitHub page and find our event transcripts issue where you can pick the issue and start working on it. You can also give us feedback on this event, uh, uh, other events that you would like to see in future, general feedback and any type issues that you might have when joining this webinar. The next webinar this month will be on January 23rd, where we'll have a webinar on the Google Summer of Code experience. We will invite a few ex-Google uh, Summer of Code interns who will share the experience and give us uh, tips on how to apply for Google Summer of Code. Today's uh, webinar is how you can contribute to Pandas, and our speaker is Marco. Uh, Marco is a Pandas code developer. He has worked as a data scientist in forecasting and was one of the prize winners of the M6 forecasting competition. He holds a MSc in Mathematics and Foundations of Computer Science from the University of Oxford. Uh, you can find him on GitHub and LinkedIn. These slides will be shared in the handouts uh, section if you feel like you need to go through them and uh, use the links. And so with that, I will hand over the microphone and video to Marco. If you have any questions, I leave them in the chat or the question and answer tab, and Marco will go through them during the webinar. And with that, Marco, you can now uh, unmute yourself and start. All right. Thank you for that wonderful introduction. 
Hello, everybody. Today, we are going to be talking about pandas and more specifically how you, yes, you can contribute to it. If you're someone who loves pandas and you want to make it better, if you hate pandas and you still want to make it better, or if you don't particularly care about pandas but are curious about getting into open source development, you can contribute so long as you abide by the code of conduct, which you can find in the GitHub repository, in the documentation. So how is today going to work? I'm going to start by giving you a bit of motivation. Why might you be interested in contributing to Pandas? Then, once you're all motivated, we'll talk about how you can get started. After that, what you can work on. I'll then share some super secret life pro tips and tricks. And finally, we'll talk about where you can go beyond your first contributions. I'd like this talk to be somewhat interactive. So I've got my slides, I've got my presentation, but throughout the talk, you're welcome to ask questions. Please do as well as at the end, if you'd like me to demo anything, please do leave a message and I'll do exactly that. But in the absence of questions, I'll just be powering through my presentation. So let's start with why. Why might you be interested in contributing to Pandas? I think one compelling reason is the impact that you can have. Pandas is downloaded over 100 million times per month, and that's only from PyPI. There's extra downloads from Conda. So if you can make it slightly better, if you can fix a bug, if you can make it slightly faster, if you can make the documentation clearer, then you can have an impact on lots of people. Then, apart from helping other people, you can also help yourself because you'll gain a lot of knowledge and some transferable skills by contributing. And then finally, you'll also get some recognition as high quality contributions can help enhance your CV. Right, now that I'm sure you're all motivated and dying to get started, let's talk about how to get started. So first of all, I recommend reading the contributing guide, which you can find in the documentation. I was uh, pondering whether to do a live demonstration of setting up a development environment, although that sometimes changes. So anything I would demo would quickly go out of date. Instead, I'm just going to tell you, read the contributing guide. That's always going to be the most up-to-date way to get started. It's how I got started when I started contributing in 2019. And it uh, taught me everything I needed to know from uh, how to uh, make a branch in GitHub to how to open a pull request. Basically, it taught me everything I needed to know to make my first contribution. Nonetheless, if you try following the instructions and you find that something doesn't quite work, it's not necessarily that you've done something wrong. It, it could just be that the contributing guide has gone out of date. So a tip I've got is to join the Slack channel. You can find instructions for how to do that in the documentation. But if you join the Slack channel, then you can interact with other contributors, with other newcomers. You can help each other out. And if you run into any issues while setting up your environment, then we can help you. Final tip I have for how to get started is learn the basics of Cython. Cython, wait a sec, what's that? So Cython, if it's the first time you hear about it, you might be thinking it's, uh, did I mispronounce Python or something? No. So Cython is a programming language 
used to get C-level performance, but with a Python-like syntax. If you see files inside the GitHub repository which end with PYX, PXD, or PYI, those are Cython files. A book recommendation I have is Cython, a guide for Python programmers, but I'd like to stress that this is not essential. Most of Pandas is written in Python, so if you are familiar enough with Python, you can contribute to Pandas. The reason I'm giving learning the basics of Cython as a tip is that if you do learn Cython, then this will open up contributions in all areas of Pandas to you. So again, it's optional, not essential to learn Cython, but if you do learn it, you'll be able to contribute to a lot more things. Speaking of things to contribute, let's talk about what you can work on. The first thing I recommend doing is going to the GitHub page of Pandas and looking in the Issues tab. There you'll find a wide variety of issues that people have reported. Maybe the documentation needs improving. Maybe the test coverage needs increasing. Maybe there are bugs that needs, need fixing. Maybe the developer workflow needs improving. And maybe there are discussions around new features and API changes. If you don't know what to work on, I suggest filtering the issues by the label good first issue. These are issues that will already have been vetted by the Pandas team as being approachable by newcomers and not requiring in-depth knowledge about the Pandas internals. But you don't have to start with good first issues. In fact, if there's something that really interests you, then even if it's not marked as good first issue, you can work on it. In fact, that's what I would suggest to do, because then if you're working on something you really care about, then you will have the motivation to keep going, to keep uh, working on it until you solve it, even if it's not necessarily the easiest thing. That's what I did when I started. When I started, I opened an issue about something which uh, I noticed being a slight bug. One of the maintainers asked me, thanks for the report. Are you interested in opening a pull request? At the time, I only had a half-baked understanding of what a pull request was, but I went through the contributing guide and was able to open my first pull request and to make my, contrib my first contribution. I then got a bit addicted to the process and kept coming back until now working on pandas is my job. Anyway, let's look at an example of something which you could work on. So here, somebody opened an issue complaining about some error message which was not clear. A maintainer replied, hey, thanks for the report, I agree. A, clear, a clearer error message would be welcome. And the issue was labeled good first issue. So then a contributor opened a pull request, which uh, you can see a few things that it did here. So not only did it fix the issue, but this pull request also included a what's new note telling users about this change in the next release of pandas and it also fixed the tests to deal with this improved error message so high quality pull request this was approved and merged typically you'll find that if you open a pull request you might have to go through a few rounds of reviews so you open a pull request some maintainer suggests some changes, suggests doing something slightly differently. You respond to those changes, and then 
after a bit, hopefully your pull request will be approved and merged. So Prasad writes in the chat, thank you for organizing amazing webinar. Yeah, thank you, Rasha, and uh, everyone else from the data umbrella team. So that's, uh, yeah, that's an example of a nice uh, pull request from a newcomer. This was this person's first pull request. So this could be you. Let's now look at some uh, super secret life pro tips and tricks. One tip I have is to learn your tools well, because this will make you much more effective as a contributor. The first tool I recommend learning really well is Git. So I've put some commands here like merge, rebase, reset, add, commit, cherry pick, log, bisect. Basically, if you read the first three chapters of a book called Pro Git, it should teach you everything you need to know for most things. And if you learn it well, it'll allow you to work on multiple issues at the same time, to review other people's code effectively. Basically, it'll give you superpowers. Next, I really recommend learning to use some debugger. So the debugger I put here, PDB, that's the built-in Python debugger. Some people, if they use PyCharm, they use the PyCharm debugger. VS Code has its own debugger. That's fine. Use whatever debugger you want. But I do highly recommend learning to use a debugger as it's a much more effective way of debugging things compared to uh, just putting print statements everywhere. Ben writes in the chat, awesome no slide, yeah. So um, you could also be doing some awesomeness in the pandas to the pandas code base. And finally, if you also master PyTest, this will be you. PyTest, not just for writing and running tests, but also it's useful, for, um, basically, it has a lot of advanced features, such as uh, fixtures, parameterization, coverage. And if you learn these, you'll be able to write much more robust, clean, and maintainable tests. So highly recommended. My second top tip is if there's a part of Pandas you really care about, then try to become an expert in it. This is not only because you're generally more effective when you work on things that you're interested in, but also because, say, once you've made a pull request which fixes a bug in a time series, if you then look for other bugs in time series, you'll already be familiar with that part of the code base. And so it'll be easier for you to make a second pull request which fixes that bug than it will be to try to fix a bug in a completely different part of the code base. So yeah, specialize. And then finally, remember that you are not an island. So be part of the community. Make the most out of interactions with other people. Join the Slack channel, attend the monthly meetings, and attend the newcomers meeting. If you're feeling inspired to do this, you're probably wondering, wait, how do I do all of these things? Okay, I've got you covered in the next slide. So for Slack, you can check the link in the readme or in the documentation. It'll tell you how to join. The community meeting, this one happens the second Wednesday of each month at 6 p.m. UTC. All welcome to attend. So the next one's going to be tomorrow, actually. A word of caution, the topics discussed in this one are usually quite advanced, so it's not necessarily the most approachable meeting for newcomers. So I'd recommend also attending the newcomers meeting, which happens the week after that. So that's the third Wednesday of the month. There is much less pressure in this meeting than in the community one. It's, this one is geared specifically towards newcomers. So addressing issues that people might have while contributing. 
giving people the chance to ask each other questions about their experiences. And also sometimes maintainers give live demonstrations of how to do certain things, such as uh, debugging, writing tests, and so on. So yeah, join the community. Once you've made a couple of contributions, you might be wondering, where do we go from here? So there are two levels of maintainership within Pandas. There is the Pandas triage team. And if you join that one, then you'll be able to label and close issues and pull requests. Pandas is generally happy to extend privileges like these to anyone who has been helpful in the issue tracker and has made some good contributions and is interested in being part of this team. A level above that is the Pandas core team. And this one lets you merge pull requests, which is quite a big responsibility. So the barrier to entry is quite a bit higher. It's gener generally required that you'll have made at least one year of high quality contributions and that you'll have had positive interactions. That's a pretty important thing if you're toxic if you're a toxic person, then it doesn't matter how good your contributions are. You, ne you need to be a good person to, to work with. Right, so what have we seen today? We've seen that Pandas is a widely used package. And so if you can make it slightly better, you can have a big impact on a lot of people. We saw that if you want to start contributing, then you should start by reading the contributing guide. And finally, we talked about the importance of being part of the community so that you can learn from other people. Thank you for your attention. And now please go out and contribute. That's uh, the end of my slides. So I'll now open up to any questions that people can have. And if there's no questions, then we can all get on with our days. I can see that in the Q&A, there might be something. Uh, why does the contributing guide change so often? All right, let's take that one first. So currently, to build the C extensions, we're using setup tools. But this is likely going to change because there's a pull request open to change this to use Meson, which allows for the C extensions to be built in parallel, among other things. So sometimes the workflow changes then, uh, outside of working on topics of interest, are there particular areas within Pandas that are currently higher priority for requiring contribution than others? That's a fantastic question. Good job. So I think plotting is probably the area that receives the least attention from contributors. So if, um, yeah, if you know Matplotlib well, and you wanted to fix up some of the visualization issues in Pandas, then you could, uh, you could have a very positive impact that way. All right, do you think make files would be good to automate repetitive tasks like tests? So there used to be a make file in the Pandas repository, but it went out of date, I think because nobody was really using it. So I'm not sure. I, I think it's fine to just invoke PyTest from the command line with whatever flags you want. So yeah, I'm not sure there needs to be a make file. But as always, do something if you've got a use case for it. If you don't, then no need to add complexity before it's necessary. Do you use Gitpod for pandas setting up the working environment? Great question. Just yesterday, a pull request was merged, adding documentation for Gitpod. I've not tried it myself yet, but I've heard good things about it. So yeah, for people attending, this is going to be 
seeing as you'll be doing this for the first time, maybe you can try the Git pod instructions, see how it works and give any feed. It would be great if you could give any feedback. Then in the chat, we've got, <laughs> we've got a great comment, which is that pandas visualizations mostly look weird. Yes, I agree. <laughs> so this is your chance to make them better. Then, what are a few comments that you have repeated a number of times to new contributors? That's a great question. So I think the most common question that we receive is something like, when I import pandas, I get a message that says something like, no module named, named uh, pandas dot underscore libs dot interval. And usually if you see that, it's because you haven't rebuilt the C extensions. If you look in the contributing guide in the section called uh, setting up your development environment, then it tells you how to rebuild your C extensions. So that usually solves this issue if, uh, if people have it. I think that's the most common question. Maybe there needs to be a better way to document it given how often it comes up. Anyway, great question. Then we've got, can you recommend resources for elevating your coding abilities from I write scripts just for me to I write code other people are actually going to read? Yeah, that's also a great question. And I think generally the best way to improve your coding is by just doing a ton of projects that you're genuinely interested in and that you want to use and that maybe other people want to use. So, if you're using, say, pandas as part of your day-to-day -day work and you run into something which maybe doesn't work the way you were expecting to, which isn't documented well, if you run into any issue, then because that actually disrupted your workflow, you'll be pretty motivated to try to fix that. So if you then put in the effort to try to address that issue, then in doing so, not only will you help other people who will have run into similar issues, but you'll also massively improve your skills in the process. Great question anyway. And uh, of course, if you're trying to contribute to open source, then other people are going to have to review your code. So that'll kind of force you to have to elevate the quality from something like this works and it's just something that I need to read to this works and other people need to be able to read it and other people five years from now will also need to be able to read it. I presume pandas will still be going five years from now. So it's important that code, even if all of the maintainer team was to change, that people would still be able to understand what the code does so that they could keep maintaining it. Right. Got a few questions coming in. Great stuff to see all of this activity. I am scared reluctant to begin contributing on my own imposter syndrome. Can I find a pair partner in Slack? That's a great question. I think we should make a channel called find a pair partner. Yeah, that's, that's a good one. I've made a mental note to, to do this. I hope that I remember. So then we've got a question, which is how often does Pandas release new updated versions? So there's uh, so Pandas tries to follow semantic versioning. So the current, the latest version that was released was version 1.5.2. So one, that is the major number. And so version 1.0.0 came out in January, 2020, I believe. And version two is going to be coming out, I think, in February this year. So that was two years later, three years later. What year are we in? Wait, has it really been three years? Anyway, we should be moving towards a, a, month, a, a yearly release cadence so we can be a bit faster with uh, deprecating things and changing the parts that don't work so well in Pandas. Then. The minor versions, they come out every few months. 
And then finally, patch versions, usually just after there's been a minor release, there'll be a patch version, say, that week or the week after to fix uh, immediate bugs which came out, which people didn't find um, when they were developing that particular minor release. So if you want to avoid bugs like these coming up, then the best thing you can do is when there's a release candidate, test your code with the release candidate such that bugs can be found early. All right, I need to scroll up again. I think I've been missing some questions. So George asks, do you purpose, purposely separate some of the functionalities that appear in third party visualization libraries such as Seaborn Heatmap or are there visualization integrations you as a team would like similar to these in the future? I'm gonna to have to think about this a second because I'm not sure I understood the question. Uh, I can't, yeah, I'm not sure exactly what you're asking about Seaborn Heatmap, but basically there is some overlap between pandas and seaborn but also there are some things like the pie chart which seaborn does not do which pandas does do so pandas is nowhere near in a position to be able to just deprecate plotting completely and hand over everything to seaborn as much as that would be nice from a <laughs> alleviating the maintainership burden point of view uh yeah it's not really possible yet so, yeah, someone was asking earlier about what parts of Pandas receive relatively fewer contributions. Plotting is one of them. If you can help uh, keep that more up to date, fix issues, make the documentation clearer, improve integrations with the third party libraries, that would be fantastic. You'd be a star. Then, how long does it usually take from PR review to it being merged? Ah, that's how long is a piece of string? The shortest I've seen has been a few minutes. The longest I've seen has been like two years. Uh, and that was just for something really complicated that not so many people understood and it took several rounds of reviews. But usually I think, uh, I don't know, a week or two, a month. It, it really depends on how complex the issue is. If you're just adding an example to the documentation, then that can usually be merged straight away. But if you're actually changing the logic inside some internal part of pandas that is likely to affect lots of other parts of pandas, then that takes a bit more care before merging it. So those kinds of kinds of contributions usually take a bit longer. And um, yeah, please keep that in mind if you're contributing. And please, uh, yeah, be patient. Try to be patient with uh, reviewers. If a reviewer asks you why you've done something, they're not necessarily suggesting that what you've done is wrong. They might genuinely not have understood why you did that thing. They're just trying to understand where you're coming from such that they can better understand the changes which you're suggesting. Anyway, a tip, a tip for reducing the time to get a, a, a pull requ request um, merged is to not make the scope too big. So try to just fix one thing. If you try to fix 10 things at the same time, it's not gonna get merged. At least not anytime soon. Cool, next question. To what extent can people who do not have programming experience but utilize Python for data science contribute? Um, I'd say to a full extent. So I used to work as a data scientist just give me a second, I'm gonna get myself rehydrated. I used to work as a data scientist and I started contributing because I ran, I ran into issues with pandas during my day-to-day -day work. And you learn, you learn things as you go, so yeah, you don't um, you don't need to like be working as a software engineer to contribute. In fact, I think a lot of contributors have backgrounds in scientific disciplines, uh, not necessarily specifically software engineering. 
Uh, so Kavanji, my background is in economics, but I use Python and R for data science. Yeah, cool. I think that's that's a fairly standard background for people who contribute to open source software. So you can definitely do this. Then Barrett asks, is there a great need for contribution in terms of documentation and in what areas, especially for beginner contributors who might want to start with that before moving on to code? Yeah, good question. I certainly recommend starting with something relatively approachable, such as documentation, rather than trying to fix the most difficult thing that's within the most deeply nested internals function, just to get used to the process. Uh, personally, what I'd like to see a lot more of in the documentation are examples. There's uh, sometimes functions which maybe take 10 arguments and maybe all of the 10 arguments are described accurately, but there's only examples of using two of those arguments. And for someone reading the documentation, it's much easier to understand what to do if there are great examples than it is if there is a highly um, accurate description. So adding more examples, that's always welcome. Please do that. Then Dea, oh, hi Dea, I think you attended one of the sprints. So yeah, welcome back. And thanks for the contributions you've already made. Uh, so for Panda's website, you can use an extension Sphinx panels for the conf.py for Sphinx, but that extension is a project that is not maintained anymore. Are there plans to update the website? I was looking at issues for the web. Uh, yikes, I wasn't aware that that was not maintained anymore. So uh, yeah, that uh, should probably be addressed before it's too late. Uh, yeah, if that's something you're interested in, then yeah, that would be a really valuable contribution. Right, I think we're at the bottom of the Q&A panel, but I can see some activity in the chat panel. Let's see what people are saying. Thanks RS and team of DU for organizing amazing webinar. Yeah, I'd like to extend my thanks as well. And uh, yeah, thanks Ariel for calling this amazing. Then Dan, pair programming for contributors would be great. Yeah, agreed. Examples, examples, plus 100% from Reshama. Yeah, agreed. Right, nice everybody. Got some really nice interactions there, some really good questions. I, I'm not seeing anything else come in. So unless there's any other questions, then I think, uh, I think we can call it a day. And I hope to see all of you attendees on the GitHub issue tracker, in the pull requests, on the Slack, in the new contributors meeting, wherever. Great talk, thank you. Ah, oh, thank you, George. Very kind of you, much appreciated. And thank you everyone for joining our webinar today. Uh, the video will be up in the next 24 to 48 hours if you would like to contribute with the event transcript so that this video is readily available and can be easily found you can do that through our github page i remember that to leave a feedback if you have any feedback the feedback form is in the handout session you can leave feedback either for these events if you have questions that you feel weren't answered this event you can also put them in the handout and then we'll reach out to marco he will answer the questions and then we will uh, post the answers on our socials. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, hope to see you on our next webinar, which is on 24th, again on open source. If you are planning to apply for the Google Summer of Code anytime, it will be a good um, webinar for you. Uh, with that, uh, thank you so much. Um, have a great morning, day, evening, uh, depending on wherever you are.